Welcome to the Tradie Wife Life podcast brought to you by Tradies in Business, where we talk to tradie wives about their goals, their challenges, their hopes and dreams, and how their trade business can help with that. There is a very powerful little tool that can be utilized for ladies in the trade businesses that can make a really big difference to the way they see themselves and to the way others around them see themselves within their role work. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Uh, baseball bat? No, that's not going to help anybody see anything. We'll be too busy pulling the blood out of our eyes. That sounds dreadful. <laughs> no. I'm not sure where you're going, Nicole. Ah, uh, it's a job title work. It is. Oh, job. okay. How many? I may have known where you were going, but I didn't want to steal your thunder, Coxie, because... I'm good at that. Oh, you're allowed to. As a male, that's what I do best. <laughs> take over. Come in and just take over everything and yeah, I'll, t- I'll look after it. Just it's let, right. no, leave it. I'll do it. Do we do that? Yes. Or do, you us, don't need to do that. I'll take care of it. Do us men do that? Yeah. No, nah, don't worry about it. It's take me too long to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a you wouldn't out. understand. How's that? You wouldn't understand, Nicole. You don't know what you're doing. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm feeling triggered. <laughs> but I, I might like to learn. No, it's fine. I don't have time to explain it. I'll do it. It'd just be easier if I did it myself. Oh, my goodness. Right. <laughs> that is what many of us face, though, right? When we, from so from the ladies' perspective, and we're always going to be um, a little bit stereotypical here in these episodes because we are talking about most traditional relationships in the trade space where we have the tradie on the tools and the tradie wife uh, working consistently on the business and in the business as well. That's you, most of you who are listening, you're in that kind of relationship. So we will be quite stereotypical. Please stop with the hate mail. This is what this podcast is about. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay. You don't have to hang around. For those of you who are listening and this can be beneficial for you, please hang in, give us some subjects to talk about today. We are talking about a job title and how it can change the way not only you see your role in the business, but your partner and then those around you see your role in your business. I've seen some, and we've had some pretty transformational conversations, Warwick, with some of our clients on this exact point. It's one of the first things we discuss as we onboard new clients because most of our clients are in a relationship. They're a couple. They come mm. into the program. And so they're navigating typically a lot of uh, headbutting because they don't know whose role's what. Would you agree? Yeah. There's definitely a lot of confusion about who's doing what and who's responsible for it, I think is probably one of the big issues. Mm. And as I was, I was pondering the topic that we're raising here, Nick, or you're raising, I'm, I'm not raising it. This is your fault. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I look, I still do that. I say those things to my wife sometimes. Um, it's only around the home here because we don't work together. She's got her own business and it's probably best that way. And <laughs> she'll try and do something on our property here or, or oh, worse still, she goes and does a thing to help. Mm-hmm. And we have a bit of a joke between us, which is not really a joke, but we kind of try and say it as a joke mm-hmm. and it's look, I'm helping and I'll, find something done out in the paddock or whatever. And, you know, one example recently, the bore got, the bore ran dry because she turned on a tap to fill a trough that was empty, thinking that she'd help me and save me some time. And, you know, cause I had a lot on and she thought, I'll fill that up for him. Cause clearly it needs to be full, not knowing that I was all over it. And I knew the trough was empty and I left it empty for a reason because our bore is really old and it runs out pretty quick. And so she pumped the bore dry and I may have been a little bit frustrated about the fact that now I had to fix the bore and reprime the pump, which is a pain in the ass. And so then that becomes a, a cause of tension between us. Cause then she feels like, okay, well, I can't help with anything. I don't know what to do. And I guess it's similar, right? That's there's confusion about our roles in that respect. Because she can see that I'm stressed out because I'm taking on everything and, and she wants to support me. And my wife is a bit of a fixer. She works in healthcare. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, and she likes to help and fix and heal and support. And so she gets in and tries to to do stuff. And then I'm like, no, don't. Just leave it alone. Now you've made more work for me. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? 
I can just imagine those conversations. Your poor, very understanding, incredible wife. Oh, she is a saint. She is a saint. <laughs> and it comes, I just think it comes down to that lack of clarity. Like, um, I think it can be really, it can be overcomplicated and it can be understated. And either end of the spectrum isn't going to help you at all. And I think it comes back to just being really clear who's responsible for what or who's taking ownership of what. Mm. And so when I go out to the paddock and I see that the the tank is, or the trough is bare, I don't need to feel like I need to fill it up. Instead, mm. I might mention it to you. Hey, I noticed this when I was out in the paddock and I could ask, do you want some help with that? You can tell me to bugger off or. So no, I got it. I'm all over it. On. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Or I'll half and half and say, yes, I'll fix it. Oh, it's another thing on my bloody list. And I'll get you a box of tissues and tell you hard <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> but with that clarity, we don't fall into that. Okay. I'm yeah. helping. I'm doing the thing. I, I think it's really common and something we all do. The converse here though, is I think we talk all the time about how most of us come into a trade business to just help out because mm -hmm. we can see our traders are drowning, right? We can see mm -hmm. that they're overwhelmed. They're stressed. There's too much on their plate. They're up all night quoting or invoicing or worse still, the invoices aren't even getting done. So mm. somehow we generally jump in and help. We usually jim jump in and help with something to do with the book work or the invoicing or the quoting. Uh, and we find ourselves sort of growing into a particular role, but we don't do that framework around what our role is going to look like. So we tend to overtake one another and that's where that friction comes in. I've told the story before when we had a building company and we paid the same insurance bill three times because nobody had taken ownership of that part of our business. Now that was a $9,000 insurance bill that was paid three times. I didn't have an extra 18 K sitting around to throw mm. at that insurance bill, but that's exactly what happened. Got a refund. So it was all okay. And it did cause mm. a lot of stress, a lot of arguments and a lot of upset. And if we had just clearly defined, this is what your role is. I'm going to be taking responsibility of that, or it was their responsibility. Then we lose all that stress and opportunity for friction it won't always stop that situation like you're talking about where we just sort of jump in and, and get in the way, which is nearly without calling out your lovely wife. It's nearly what we're all tempted to do at times. And we see it a lot with the tradie jumping in and, well, I just did it because I was there or, or it's so much easier if I just do it. Mm. So th it's, it's a negotiation. It, it, it's communication moving forward. So you don't keep falling into that trap. However, with the boundaries in place, you know where the boundaries are. You've got a starting point and you can work from there. But I, mm, I don't know, Nick. I know this is playing into the the theme of these episodes a little bit with me <laughs> disagreeing with you. And this is not, this is not manufactured. Oh, can I, I don't know. Am I going to get trolled if I say this? You don't know what I'm about to say. I have no idea what you're about to say. You should just give it a go and I'll apologize in advance. Yeah. You can just bleep me out for the next three minutes. <laughs> I think I think a large part of this issue stems from the tradie wife. Yes, you're gonna get trolled. <laughs> <laughs> and allow me to be to explain. Please, please allow me to defend myself. Please, please. Your Honor, Your Honor, in my defense. <laughs> I and look, you and I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of trade business owners and couples for many years. And so we've seen this many, many times. So this is coming from a place of observation, not, you know, my personal beliefs. Um, I've seen a lot of tradie wives be their own worst enemy mm -hmm. and, and create a problem here because of the story they tell themselves that they don't know enough about X, Y, Z, or they couldn't possibly handle the invoicing. How many, how many times, Coxie, have you and I been told by a tradie wife that there is no way I could do quoting? I don't yeah. know enough about insert the name of the trade here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is a crock because mm -hmm. the blokes don't know that much about quoting either. They're just making shit up. Sorry, am I allowed to use those sorts of words here? Yes, you can do as you please. Not really tradie rude. Wife. I hear it all the time. Uh, <laughs> so... Look, I'm not blaming the ladies. And I think because they are a source of a lot of um, problems here with with this allocation of roles, 
I think that's a huge opportunity because it means that the tradie wife is actually in control of changing it as well. Mm -hmm. And all it requires, which sounds really simple, Warwick, that's fantastic, mate. You just said that on a podcast, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. I'm healed. Um, all it requires is to take ownership of that and allow themselves to, to, I don't know, take on that responsibility, take on that role, Nick. I think there's definitely a lack of confidence that the industry perpetuates because they speak in their own language. It's like uh, Rakesh listeners, if you were listening to him recently, he was talking about accountantese, accountants talk in their own little language, tradies talk in their own little language. And I so I feel as though the industry kind of perpetuates some of that lack of confidence for many of our tradie wives jumping into the role. And in actual fact, if you think about every time you call the doctor, or you call the pharmacy or you call probably any medical space or even a lawyer and your accountant, to be fair, you get through to the first step. And the first step is generally somebody that doesn't form that role and they can't answer your questions. I don't. I still don't know how to build a house, but I can run a building company. I don't need to know how to build a house. I only need to know how to run the company. I think that's the opportunity for many of our tradie wives that are listening in. You can run that company. You don't need to be able to do the the insert trade here. You just need to know how to run the rest of the company. And I feel as though it, the confidence that comes to do what you're saying, take ownership of that role, to jump in and do some of the things that traditionally we feel as though we can't has to come with time. It's a bit of a confidence game. So we do need to learn some of the terminology so we can carry conversations and we need to get okay with saying, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to find out and I'll call you back because that seems to be the stumbling block for so many. They f we feel like we're going to get called out because we don't know. Most people don't know either. Most of the people you're talking to don't know the answer to the question. That's why they're asking you in the first place. It's okay to say, I'm going to find out for you and let you know. I, I think this is where the whole, you know, uh, I think it was Alan Pease's book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From yes. Venus. I, I think this whole men and women from different planets thing is – we 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 are different creatures and you know as coxie said if this is not your bag and you you think differently then that's totally okay uh, mm. you know we've all got varying opinions on how things are or should be uh, my perspective is men and women are very different we think differently we respond to situations differently that's been my experience in life and based on that and what we see with our clients coxie over at tradies in business is that um, men put a lot of value on what they know mm. and having all the answers. And that's caused a lot of stress and distress and um, anxiety and suffering for a lot of men because they don't have all the answers. And when they don't, they feel like they failed and let their families down and they're less than and all that sort of stuff. And I think for, well, certainly the women in my life and the women that I've worked with over the years, a, a big source of, validation or value for them is being able to help mm. um, and support, you know, it's a support role, which is by, by no means less valuable than what the guys are doing. In fact, you and I often talk to our clients about this and you and I both, I think, agree on this, Coxie. I hope we so. Do. We do, we do. I actually think the women are the leaders in relationships. I think my wife is the leader of our house. She is, she is the leader of our house. I'm the the figurehead, uh, and and that's not me saying that. You know, that's my wife sees me as the the man of the house, and I have a particular role. Um, but she absolutely leads our household. She leads our household with the way we parent our son, with so many decisions about our um, relationship. Uh, she gives me feedback on when I'm being an ass, um, and encourages me to go and do some more work on myself, or you know go see the psych again or whatever it is. Right. So, mm -hmm. but she doesn't see herself that way. Mm. And I do. And and I wonder if more blokes actually do think that silently, mm -hmm. probably don't know how to language it without sounding patronizing. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually think women should grab hold of that. It's 2024 as we record this with the amount of work that's been done over the last 70 years around women's women's rights and equality and equitable outcomes for the sexes, I think some women actually need to go, oh, yeah, it's okay for me to, to step in and do this. You know, it's not 1932. 
I think you've just redeemed yourself. And if anyone's managed to hang on long enough, you won't get any hate mail after all. <laughs> Stupid podcast. That bloke's a prick. Well, it's always challenging to navigate these kind of conversations, right? Because it, it in the first instance, when you make a claim or a statement, before you have the opportunity to explain your point of view, it can sound really sexist. And I know you well enough that we can go to these spaces because that's not who you are. And I can imagine that there'll be some listeners that were triggered initially by what you said. And if they hung on long enough, then they'll understand, okay, no, this guy really gets it. I don't need to be threatened or triggered or feel concerned by what's being said. I think it's you're absolutely right. There's a great opportunity here for more tradie wives to step in and lead and run their trade businesses. And that's really what we're coming back to today with something as simple as a position description. It changes the way you feel about what you're doing. It changes the external perception of the role that you are occupying within the business. And it changes the way you then start to have conversations with your partner around the business, what decisions need to be made, how to get to the goals that you're working towards, rather than being stuck in a cycle that hasn't been serving you previously. And for some of you, you've already found this sweet spot. Don't get me wrong. For others of you that are listening, you'll be stuck in conflict and resentment. We see a lot of resentment in our relationships or our conversations with potential clients early on. Um, And you have the opportunity by being a leader to move through that process rather than getting stuck there. Not everyone's there, as I said, but some of you will be, and that's okay. I've found myself there on many an occasion. So we do encourage you, please, listeners, if you're listening today, you don't currently, and you don't currently have a job title, give yourself a title. You are at the very least a business manager. And there are so many other opportunities available to you as a tradie wife playing a role in the trade business that can really start to build out a whole new career for you. Another conversation we have with lots of the tradie wives that we work with that we bring onto the show here is around how many of them have let go of a previous career to come and help or just help out in the business and it turns into that whole new career, something that they can create doing the things that they love. This is the opportunity that we're trying to encourage you to take today. At least start with this role description. Who are you? What do you do? That then allows for bigger conversations about who's going to be doing what in the business so you keep away from standing on each other's toes and it brings back a little bit more peace and harmony. Would have that worked for you in your previous business relationships work? I think it works in every business relationship, Nick. <laughs> Whether you're working with a member of a different gender or the same, I think it's mm. just comes bit down to working with humans. Um, mm. And in this case, you know, there tends to be similar differences of perspective between men and women. Um, you know, men see things one way, women see it the other. I think acknowledging that is not saying anything bad against either either of the sexes. It's just acknowledging that there are differences there the same way an apprentice sees things differently to a, a 25-year veteran. So, you know, that's not saying that the veteran's an idiot or the apprentice is worthless. I think if we acknowledge some of the, the diversity and the difference, we can actually get closer together. 100%. It reduces so much friction to understand that we do just think differently and we get to move forward rather than, you know... Imagine coming into a potential area of conflict, understanding that we both think differently, bringing both perspectives into play, pulling that back to solution-based thinking. Suddenly we get the clarity and move through that so much more quickly than we do if we don't acknowledge it in the first place. Sounds it's like okay. utopia, Nick. I know. <laughs> well, it's the first step in it, isn't it? Uh, listeners, if you would like to give us some feedback on today's episode, or if you would like to suggest something that's going on in your life and get some clarity, or at least our opinions on, on what that could potentially look like, or what you might be tripping over, please come and find us on Facebook, Trady Wife Life. We have a podcast discussion group where there are lots of other like-minded Trady Wives hanging out, maybe airing a bit of grief maybe looking for some answers, but at least having a chat. We'd love to see you over there. Thank you for listening. 